Cue to get started. Um, welcome, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Trent Blackburn. I'm a systems development engineer with AWS. Been with Amazon for about seven years now. Um, I come from a help desk and systems administration background. And uh, today I specialize in automation for the AWS managed services team. Uh, so working with a lot of PowerShell and uh, a little bit of Python, some systems manager automation and things like that. And today we're going to be talking about a PowerShell implementation of AWS CDK. Uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar, CDK is an open source development framework um, created by AWS essentially to simplify infrastructure as code. Um, so, show of hands, who has used um, CloudFormation before? Nearly everyone in the room, and that's perfect. So, keep your hand up if you have also used CDK before. Who prefers CDK? Who prefers native CloudFormation? Interesting. Okay. That's not the split that I thought it was going to be. So, um, so uh, CloudFormation is, um, in my experience, a little bit more uh, raw, a little bit more verbose, uh, can be a little bit more painful to deal with because you're explicitly defining so many things. CDK is a bit of an abstraction layer on top of that where you can define the infrastructure as code in the language that you like to use. Um, the popular ones are TypeScript, um, but you can define in just about any language that you can think of, except PowerShell until now. So you could do Python and quite a few others as well. And so what we've done here uh, is my colleague Taka, who will introduce himself in a moment, um, has created a implementation of AWS CDK in PowerShell. So what we're going to talk about a little bit is going to be um, Switch to the uh, next slide, please. Let's see, I think I've skipped ahead a little bit here. Cool, all right. So what we're gonna cover here in the session first, of course, is why should we write AWS CDK in PowerShell? And I'm sure you can think of some reasons off the top of your head. We'll go into a little bit of detail about that. Um, I already covered a little bit about what CDK is, and we're not gonna get too deep into that since that's not really what this session is about. Uh, and we're going to cover in depth the AWS CDK PowerShell module, which is the really important thing of this presentation. And then we're going to do some demo and some uh, Q&A. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so we did mostly an overview of uh, AWS CDK already, so I kind of skipped ahead a little bit, but um, hopefully that's pretty straightforward. So exactly like the slide shows, you can see that it's just a infrastructure as code implementation in your preferred language. So um, it makes life a lot easier and works really well in pipelines uh, and CICD and everything like that. Um, so it just makes everything a lot easier compared to CloudFormation in my experience. So uh, if you go ahead to the next slide. And so the components are more or less as they are shown there. So instead of CloudFormation where you have explicitly defined resources in a very verbose fashion, um, usually in uh, YAML is probably my preferred language to write CloudFormation in, um, you have basically things that stack on top of that. And the code defines the resources instead and abstracts a lot of that heavy lifting away. Uh, so that's the real benefit of CDK. And what you can do is pull from this concept called constructs. So instead of explicitly defining every single property associated with a particular resource type, like an EC2 instance or an S3 bucket, you can just tell CDK in code to create that resource. And then it will choose sane defaults for most everything. You can specify values if you like, but that's the, the benefit of CDK. Whereas in native cloud formation, you have to, you have to define those specific properties for the most part um, without having sane defaults. So it's a lot more painful to understand everything that's going on there. Whereas CDK helps with a lot of that heavy lifting and gets you to creating the infrastructure rather than understanding it in super deep detail. 
Uh, and so that's managed primarily by the um, AWS CDK CLI. Um, super simple tool to help um, synthesize templates, which essentially takes the CDK code and generates a CloudFormation template out of it. And then the next most common command is the deploy command. And that will actually deploy the infrastructure to your target account or uh, accounts. Uh, next slide, please. And we covered a lot of this already, but the constructs are designed to help abstract those pieces away. And um, I think Taka can go into some of these constructs a little bit more when we get into the PowerShell part of the presentation. So I won't go too deep here. Uh, go ahead and go to the next one. All right, so why write AWS CDK in PowerShell? I think we can already pretty much understand the main reason we know PowerShell. We're at a PowerShell conference. We're PowerShell engineers, PowerShell enthusiasts. It's a lot easier to write something in a language that you already know rather than learn something new like Python or TypeScript or any of those other languages that CDK supports. It would be cool to learn some of those things, but and I'm sure a lot of you have already, but it takes time and it's not trivial to do. If you can leverage a language that you already use and that you're already familiar with, you can save a heck of a lot of time. So that's really what we're working on here today. And we're going to show some awesome demos of how to programmatically define these resources in PowerShell rather than in native CloudFormation. So on the left side, it's a little difficult to see, but that is a CloudFormation template of how to create a VPC in AWS, Virtual Private Cloud, an isolated computing environment that is um, a pretty standard construct in AWS. Uh, and on the right side is the version of that in the PowerShell AWS CDK. So it's a lot more readable and a lot simpler to understand for those of us who know PowerShell. Um, go ahead to the next slide. All right, and so this is a nice little representation of exactly why we should write it. PowerShell's cool. We love PowerShell. We're all here because we enjoy using PowerShell probably more than most other languages. So that's definitely why I have always been interested in this CDK implementation. I'm not super strong in Python or TypeScript or any of the other supported languages that CDK uses. Um, so if you are an AWS user and you manage any infrastructure at all, you are in the exact right place. This is hopefully gonna make your life a little bit easier to define the infrastructure you care about in PowerShell and use that to deploy rather than having to deal with multiple languages. So hopefully the idea is to simplify everything that we're gonna do. And uh, we covered what um, the AWS CDK is and who was asking for this? I know I was. Um, I guess a show of hands of who uh, already uses CDK in their day-to-day -day workflow. Not too many, but hopefully that number will go up after this session if you have any interest in playing around with this module. So hopefully that number is going to increase. Uh, and I think we can go to the next slide. All right, so I think this is the part of the presentation where I pass things off to Taka. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this mic off. All right, thank you, Trent. Um, yeah, I have my, I guess, intro slide upcoming, but the uh, really, the idea here is, like Trent mentioned, you know, there are people asking there on the uh, AWS CDK GitHub repo about, hey, like when we're gonna have PowerShell implementation of CDK. So the approach we took was not really rewriting the CDK construct in PowerShell native, but more like taking the existing construct written in C Sharp. As you know, you can import the C Sharp assembly files, right, and then into PowerShell and then use those classes. So that we kind of took like, you know, simple approach here. And then we published, you know, we open sourced it under uh, AWS samples repo, I'm um, sorry, the organ organization in a GitHub. So you can find it today, which we're gonna talk about in a bit, but that's how, you know, we came to publish this uh, open source uh, PowerShell module, so. But uh, any questions so far? No? <laughs> All right, actually I didn't introduce myself, so um, before I get to this slide, uh, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Taka Masumoto. I'm a senior technical account manager working for AWS. Um, I've been with AWS for 
a little over five years. Um, I started uh, as a cloud support associate, supporting Windows services for AWS. And now I'm in the enterprise support <laughs> organization, supporting federal financial uh, enterprise customers. Uh, I don't write PowerShell every day like uh, you know Trend does anymore, but um, I support customers using Microsoft workloads. So there I write you know, PowerShell scripts here and there and I automate stuff, uh, both internally and externally. So, all right. So let's talk about the uh, actual PowerShell module here. Um, so like I mentioned, you know, it's open source. Please, you know, you can use the camera to go to the <laughs> repo if you like. Um, but I ask you hold on to trying it out until we get to the demo phase. And then if you like, you can follow me as well. And there are just three public functions. It's pretty simple and small PowerShell module. Like I mentioned, I'm, I'm not really rewriting the entire CD, uh, CDK construct. So the idea of this PowerShell module is for you to be able to basically create the, uh, uh, the uh, starting template for the CDK imp implementation in PowerShell. So we actually wrote uh, four different uh, templates uh, for the common, you know, commonly used services. So you can download uh, those samples and you can st start writing your PowerShell to deploy your CDK apps. So we're gonna get to each function in a minute. All right, so the first one here is a new CDK package. So this is really kind of mocking like what the AWS uh, CDK CLI does. So I know like maybe most of you have used CDK, so you probably know, but the CDK CLI provides different commands. Uh, the first one you, we, we probably use is CDK new um, to create the um, new CDK package, which this one really does for you for PowerShell. Um, just because CDK CLI doesn't support PowerShell as one of the target language, um, this one really kind of, you know, work around the process for you by downloading the dependencies you need for CDK and then creating the sample files for you. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so it's pretty simple function. And then the next slide I'm gonna talk about kind of internal, but it's again like pretty simple function here. So this is the sequence uh, diagram here. So again, it's pretty simple. Uh, so what it does is when you call the function, um, it creates a new CDK directly, locally, uh, under the path that you specify, straightforward. And then add those like sample files for you. So CDK.json is what you need for your CDK CLI to be able to deploy your CDK app. So it creates that additional files that you need, the main app file to define the CDK app. Uh, so if you remember from the earlier slide, uh, one of the things, I mean, the idea is about CDK is having the CDK app at the very top and then have the stack underneath. So uh, you need to define those things in your code. So um, it has the app file for that. And then also some uh, unit tests already written for you. Uh, so you have the unit test file downloaded for you so you can use those as kind of samples to get started. And then once that's done, it reads dependencies from the packages to PS1 file. And then based on the dependencies defined there, um, it starts downloading those files from using NuGet. That's the package source we use, um, as well as where it's um, with the AWS CDK um, you know, packages are stored I mean, as well. So, so once that's done, save those packages under the packages directly for the um, CDK app, and that's why, how you get started. Um, you, you see on the right-hand side, but the new CDK package actually use install CDK package. So those are two out of three public functions in, the, in this PowerShell module. So again, it's pretty small. And then again, the idea is you, this one is basically helper. These are helper functions. So once you have those files locally, then you start writing your PowerShell code to be able to deploy your CDK app. So uh, any questions so far? Good. All right, cool. And this is the last like public function we have in the module. Just import CDK packages. So it's really, again, this one is straightforward as well, just importing the uh, DLL files from the, uh, the packages directory. So how you use it really is that within your code, 
you can use this, but you don't. You can obviously write the same thing manually as well if you like. But the this one kind of simplifies how you import those files when you actually run CDK deploy or CDK since to synthesize a template. So that's where it's being used. Again, I'm going to cover that in the demo, so you can wait till that to see how that works. But again, this one, I mean, sequence diagram for this one is, again, pretty straightforward. Um, so when you call it, it looks at the um, packages file again to see like which ones are the dependencies for this given pack, I mean, the CDK app, and try to find those under the local directory. They specify. So again, this is kind of tied to what you saw earlier about the new CDK package command. So once you again like uh, call new CDK package, it downloads the dependencies, and obviously you want to use that when you deploy CDK. Then you use this import um, CDK packages command to do that. So again, pretty straightforward, I think, because you write a lot of PowerShell, I believe. So <laughs> any questions? Good. Straightforward, cool. All right, awesome. So before I really go into demo, I'm gonna show you like how I mean the, what the the flow looks like for developers to use this module. So a couple prerequisites here you probably already have on your local machine or dev you know desktop, but the the main ones are NuGet CLI, which you need to pull the dependencies, and PowerShell seven or later because um, CDK is written, um, it requires .NET Core, so that's why. And then again, .NET Core version 3.1 later, so that's another requirement here. And then the last two are for deploying the CDK apps. So you need AWS credentials, of course, and then AWS CDK toolkit. So those are required for the CDK portion of piece. All right, so how this works really is pretty, again, simple, like four steps here. So first, uh, you can download the open source uh, PowerShell module. And then once that's done, you can create the new uh, AWS CDK app using new um, CDK package command, like, like I discussed you know, uh, just, just now. And then once that's done, you start writing your PowerShell code in the app uh, PS1 file that the new CDK uh, app command creates. So once you're done defining your AWS resource in the code, you can use AWS CDK CLI to deploy that. Um, before you deploy it, you can synthesize a CloudFormation template. So you can double check, you know, whatever you defined looks good or gets synthesized. So once that's done, you can call AWS CDK, I'm sorry, CDK deploy to deploy the uh, CDK apps. So that actually creates the CloudFormation stack for you to deploy AWS resources, which you are probably familiar with if you've only used CloudFormation before. Cool, simple. All right, awesome. All right, cool. Uh, so before going to demo, this is what I'm gonna go through in a minute. So on the left-hand side is basically my laptop right here. And then I'm going to pull the open source uh, module from Git, uh, GitHub through Git, using Git command. And then importing that. And then calling new CDK package command to create the package. And then I'm going to make some updates on the file. And once that's done, I'm going to call the AWS CDK CLI commands. And through that, uh, you see on the right-hand side, you know, that's basically what the CDK um, uh, template deploys. So you see there's a bunch of resource out there, basically whole infrastructure for you. So I'm not gonna go really go deep into CDK piece, um, but I, you know, I can show you like how, you know, basically having like maybe 40 lines of code can synthesize maybe 300, 400 lines of CloudFormation template and deploys in a bunch of AWS resources for you. So, cool. All right, let me go into the demo. All right. 
can everyone see my screen? Is good? Cool. All right. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to sell another AWS service here, but the, I'm using AWS Amazon Workspace here. So if you haven't used it, it's a cool service, a UC service we have. So I'm running a demo on that. So I have a clean environment. So let me start off with this PowerShell right, um, right here. So like I mentioned earlier, the first step I'm going to do in the fall is just just pulling the package. So again, like if you have your laptop, I mean, feel free to follow me if you like. Uh, I don't know if you still got the same QR code from earlier slide. If you have, you can go or just Google it. And then let me just clone it. So, so you probably know how that works. So let me just list out the uh, the files under that. So like I mentioned, you know, just three public functions here and some obviously utility functions on the private for the module. And then, I mean, everything else is what you're probably used to anyways. So pretty st standard PowerShell module here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to import this PowerShell module for, um, import it here all right so i just imported the uh the powershell module that i just downloaded again pretty short straightforward process here get type get module here so you can see like it's been actually imported so at the very top you see it is cdk powershell module being imported and then you see three exported commands so obviously those are the ones you can use um, but as I mentioned earlier, you probably use just two out of three uh, for your day-to-day -day use. So these three here. All right. So now I'm going to actually create a um, CDK app. Oops. All right. So let me just create a demo folder. I'm in directory here. So let me just go to demo. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm again calling this new CDK package command and just specifying the current directly, not specifying absolute pass. And then just using EC2 template. So there are four templates available uh, today. So blank just has no AWS resource defined, so it's just really blank starting template. And EC2, so the EC2 template deploys EC2 instance and the whole infrastructure, including VPC. And another one is S3, so S3 just little S3 bucket. And last one is serverless. So serverless deploys serverless application, so creates API Gateway Lambda and a few other resources. So today I'm going to use uh, EC2 as a template. So what it's doing is, again, you see here creating some files under the new CDK uh, directory that it creates and pulling dependencies from NuGet using NuGet CLI. So, so it might take a minute or two here uh, just to download all the dependencies. So while you're enjoying my uh, PowerShell session here. Any questions so far? I can answer in the meantime. No? No? I see nobody's taking notes, so <laughs> it's not interesting. <laughs> Are you guys finding this interesting? No? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, you mentioned that you come from Azure space, and then there is nothing similar to CDK, I believe. And then next week, once you start deploying resources through CDK in AWS, this can be a game changer. Is that correct? <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. So, sorry, I took a minute here, but the, you know, it went through to download all the dependencies and you know it, cr it created some files there. So let me show you how that looks like. So let 
me go to the CDK. So you just created this CDK PowerShell EC2 directory that you can see here on the screen. And it just so it basically created three static files, cdk.json, ec2 app, and ec2 app tests. And then packages directly has all the dependencies from NuGet that you need for the AWS CDK, right? So I'm going to go into ec2 app mainly here so that you see how resources are defined in PowerShell. But I'm going to briefly touch on uh, cdk.json and the test files as well. So. If you have any questions or if you want to see more of you know, one of those things, uh, let me know so I can spend more time there as well. All right. I don't know if you were in the VS Code session earlier. No, I was. But the uh, I'm not really versed with VS Code. So if you see me doing things manually, sorry. I don't use it every day, I would say. So. Um, so let me go f start with the cdk.json file. So again, I know you, oh yeah, sorry. Let me zoom in. All right, can everyone see? All right, cool, thank you. Thank you, Trent. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> so cdk.json file is basically what you need for your cdk app. So one important thing to remember here is this app key defined here up top. So this is what the CDK call, you know, calls when you try to synthesize a template or try to deploy. So obviously, we were doing PowerShell here. So we want CDK to call PowerShell and PowerShell script to be able to create the template. So if you actually you know, you have your CDK CLI installed locally, you can you know, create a new CDK app for TypeScript, Python, and whatnot. You kind of see different values there because, you know, depending on, you know, which programming language you use, it, call, you know, uh, calls different uh, functions there. But anyways, so you see here PowerShell being used. So this is kind of like how, you know, PowerShell module defines manually. So if you look at the open source package, you see that defined there. And if you have other files that you create as the main entry point, you can update this value here. And if something fails, if you, let's say, decide to rename this file, you know why, because it's defined here. So it's, it's nothing dynamic, so you can just come here and just define it. So, And everything else is kind of more CDK specific. Uh, I'm not going to really go too deep into, so, uh, but it's just base uh, CDK configuration file here for you. And then, really, the main one here is. Sorry, let me just close this out. All right, so this ec 2 appps one file is really what you know you want to learn about today. Um, again, nothing special. It's really this PowerShell script, you know. But the I'm sorry, like again, like you know, I don't know if you're in the session. You know, they called out you can use this using and requiring all that cool stuff that you can use with new PowerShell version. I'm not using that here, I'm sorry. Uh, you can do that if you like. But the um, anyway, so the idea here is, again, using PowerShell, right, to be able to deploy AWS resources. So this one is just starting template. You don't have to use this. This, again, to show you how you can use PowerShell and import and do all this cool stuff. So. To make it simpler for you, um, this one has a bunch of functions. So let's say new CDK app basically does just one thing, just creating the uh, CDK app. So again, app is the you know, top level thing, and then you add stacks. So stacks are CloudFormation stacks adding, you know, added to CDK app, and then each CloudFormation stack has AWS resource underneath. So basically, you have to you know create this CDK app first. So calling this function just return this um, you know CD, new CDK app um, object, which you can use later to add you know stacks and whatnot. So, and then right here you see new CDK stack. So this is what you can call to create the stack. 
and then I have a main function later calling all these things that you kind of see how these things fit together. But again, like defining these functions to make it easier, right? So you can create additional stacks if you like, or more apps or whatnot. So again, these are just examples, right? And here you see new CDK BPC default props. So props for properties. So you can define like how you want to create BPC. Um, so I'm going to change a couple of things in a minute, but the, the default one has all these settings and then you can change it if you like or add new properties, you know, to define your BPC. And then you can do the same for other AWS resources as well. And I saw some of you were falling asleep, so I'm sorry. This might be a little too boring. All right, so again, like the, the two-step process here for AWS resources. So you want to define the properties, right? And pass that to create the AWS resource. So this is what, you know, the new CDK app, I'm um, sorry, BPC creates the BPC resource for you. And you see in the parameter, it takes the, um, sorry, here, BPC props and then stack. So here it's creating new object and adding the BPC to the stack. So basically when you deploy the CDK app, it has this BPC uh, added to the specific CloudFormation stack that you create through this code. Make sense? <laughs> cool. All right, so I'm basically doing the same thing for EC2 because I want to deploy EC2 instance. Again, this is really straightforward, you know, blank EC2 um, template. So you can update that if you like, um, do a loop to create multiple EC2 and stuff like that. So that's really the beauty of using CDK with PowerShell. Um, and then I'm not going to go into every single properties here, but again, like properties defined through one function and then passing that to another function to create the EC2. If you like, you can rewrite it. Right, make it better. Um, so here is the main function, right? So main function calls all these uh, different functions. Um, this script defines. So first, just importing CDK PowerShell module. This is kind of optional, right? If you copy the uh, PowerShell uh, module under the one of the directories, you know, PowerShell directly, you know, allows you to import, and you don't really need to have that, right? Or if you already import it through your session, you don't need that like I did. You don't really need that if you want to, you know, when you call the um, script. And then just importing CDK packages, it's again, it's like importing DLL. So if you don't do that, you won't be able to use those CDK constructs, right? So once that's done, you can call these functions. Again, like, you know, you write PowerShell for more than I do, so you know if you have these functions defined, you don't have to write this spaghetti code, right? Define all these things. Um, so once, if you see this, right, just like five, you have six lines of code, creating, you see in a minute, but creating like 300 plus lines of CloudFormation template code, so that's nice, right? So just calling it one by one, create an app, stack, so you see like uh, app being passed to stack, so stack is added to this CDK app, and then all these resources being added to a stack, right? So this CDK um, app has one stack, then that stack has these resources underneath. And then at the very end, you call this since uh, function to synthesize a template. So that actually creates a CDK out directly here. Once synthesized, then you see all these CloudFormation templates. So, so far so good. Cool. Straightforward, yeah. <laughs> Straightforward uh, PowerShell code. Um, so let me do this here. All right, so now I show you how, you know, this default template looks like. Let me just do this, uh, CDK since. So I'm using, I'm sorry typo here. So I'm using this CDK CLI. So this is not something we wrote. Uh, this just comes out of, uh, comes from uh, AWS. So you can just download it and use it locally. So when this is being called, like I said, it looks at the CDK.json file. And then as you saw, it's pointing to app 
dash I'm sorry, EC2 dash app file. So you just call in PowerShell and the PowerShell is calling that specific file and then now it's importing these packages. So it's gonna probably take a minute or so. Um, importing these and calling all those functions you just saw. And then it's going to create um, the CD Kittle out uh, directly. And then underneath the, you see, now this output is just CloudFormation template, but you see this uh, file being created out there that I'm gonna show you in a minute. So you, you see here the CD Kittle out, that's just default output location for CDK. And then there's a bunch of things being created. But what you are interested in is this second one right here. So this is the CloudFormation template, right? So as Trent was talking about earlier, so now, I mean, if you do like manual CloudFormation, um, how you call it, like, you know, coding, um, you can define all these things manually, that's fine, but like, when you think about the complexity of your infrastructure, right, dependencies, and then sometimes you need to make updates, but you don't know where, you know, I mean, you might have a depends on tag, but like you sometimes you get confused about which resource is dependent on what. And making changes to one resource can have, you know, some impacts on other resources and stuff like that. So, but anyways, so earlier you saw like, you know, a few lines of um, PowerShell code right, calling different functions. If you include those functions, probably like maybe a little over 100 lines or so. Um, but you see here, uh, I'm just gonna toggle all these for you so it's easy to see. So now it's passing 100 lines already, right? And if you notice, um, our PowerShell code didn't really create, create all these things. I mean, we didn't define every single subnet, if you notice it, right? So CDK allows you to just define one single VPC, and inside that, you know, it just creates these default subnets for you. So that's one kind of beauty of CDK here. And then, as you see, it's like over 300 lines of CloudFormation template already. Might be like 600 lines or something. So I'm not gonna do everything here. But you see like, you know, just, I would say less than 100 lines of code can produce this many lines of cloud function template code. So that's one nice thing about it, right? So since we have some time here still, like I can show you um, how you can update this main app file and then make some changes to the cloud function template. Yeah, sorry, um, any questions so far? Yeah, please. Yes, so the question was like, you know, I, I did show you like, you know, how cdk.json file was defined. And then the question was like, what really happens when you call cdk since command? Uh, that's basically comes from the AWS cdk uh, CLI toolkit. So yes, I mean, when the cdk command is called, you know, cdk since it, it calls this PowerShell EC2 apt PS1 file, I'm sorry, PS1. Um, so again, this EC2 PS, um, so EC2 app is this file right here under this directly. So it points to this local file and then you invoke it through PowerShell. So again, like this is not the PowerShell module specific configuration, it's a CDK configuration. So CDK CLI looks at this JSON file as the um, you know configuration for the configuration. And then again, for the app, it points to this specific command. So that's where, you know, CDK go, you know, go to uh, invoke and create these resources for you. Now, I just wanted to ask if you didn't want to run the CDK synth command, you could just run pwsh bc 2 appps one and it would generate the same output, right? Yeah, that's correct. Thanks, Trent. Yeah, I mean, really, yeah, I'm sorry, before I get to that. Yeah, really, uh, the point here is like, you know, PowerShell module that I, you know, I did just demoed is more about like kind of supplementing what CDK CLI doesn't do today. So if you want to start writing, co you know, CDK code in PowerShell, like the really starting point is defining everything like I just showed you manually, right? That's 
what the current state is. So if you want to just you know start from the base template, that makes it easier for you. So that's really the idea of that. So sorry, you had a question. Yeah. So the question is like here in this example, I'm defining a function for basically every single CDK resource, but the any plan for uh, after creating PowerShell module to include those individual functions, you can actually import that and call in the start calling those. Um, yeah, actually we thought about it. Uh, we didn't go that far, um, really, because one thing here is we just released it, and then you know we want to get feedback and how you want to use it. If that makes it easier, might be that might be the pass, and then you know that that's really, you know, you can start driving that as well, right? <laughs> Um, start contributing if you if you're interested. So, cool. Any other questions? No. All right. So we got a few minutes here. So, um, let me do one thing. So earlier you just saw the bunch of uh, subnets being created. So you can just let's say make updates here for max AZs uh, to one. So that will reduce the number of subnets being created through CloudFormation template. Um, and then you can add extra attributes here if you like. Uh, let's say defining how each subnet should be configured with you know, um, the specific CIDR block that you want to specify, stuff like that. So you can make other updates as well here. And then again, once you call CDK Sense, that's going to create the new CloudFormation template for you. So. I know we got a few minutes here um, only. So does anybody have any questions? Yeah, please. Uh, the question was if there was any way to, uh, actually, I guess, translate existing uh, infrastructure, the CloudFormation stack into CDK. I believe that's not available today. Um, but you might be able to kind of like, I mean, one way you can do is you can use your CloudFormation template to be part of your CDK stack, if you like. I mean, that there's a way to do that, like pointing to local CDK, I'm sorry, CloudFormation file, for example. So there could be a way to work around that, but not directly, like natively translating that to uh, CDK code, as far as I know. Yeah, so with CDK, you can input existing resources into your CDK app. So you can point, like your CDK application, say import DynamoDB table X, and then use that as a resource internally to your app and reference it and grant permissions and the like. All right, awesome. So I, I guess we got uh, just one minute left. So any other questions? Or I can just close out. Uh, sorry, go ahead, please. Sorry. Uh, the question was, when you run the sense again, like, does that preserve all the resource names? Uh, the answer to that is it depends because so there are two different things here. So when you you actually look at the um, PowerShell or CDK code, you can define resource names. So that's how you kind of define how the individual resource in the CloudFormation template should be named, and then. Again, there's another thing about how AWS resources are going to be named. So there are kind of two different things there, but you can kind of customize how those look like, if you like, by passing specific you know, uh, values to specific you know, attributes. So I think uh, when you leave it by default, it was kind of randomly generating some, some unique names. So if you leave those and then change some of the properties and then synth again, then we'll create entirely new resources rather than modifying existing ones, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. I hope that answers your question. Yep, all right. Cool. I know we're at the time, but the um, the very next slide here is, all right. So what's next? Um, so again, you know, if you are interested, please try it out and then see you know, uh, if you want to start using that for your test environment or whatnot. And then feel free to contribute to the package. It's open source. And then come talk to us. We're out there at the booth. Um, so if you have any questions, let us know now or later, you know, whenever you like. And then q and I guess you know more questions, I believe. So that's it. Thank you very much.